in one genus, you have some of the hardest to find, most expensive collector's pieces for the curious collector plant parent and the most commonly distributed found in every garden center easy care plant. How can these two things be in one genus? Let's talk about it. Welcome to the Anthurium video. Hello, plant friends. I'm Maria, your new best plant friend, and I'm here to help you care for plants like these anthuriums successfully, but more importantly, grow joy in your life while doing so. Here is something I find so interesting about anthuriums. They're kind of maybe the most widely misunderstood plant because I feel like you have two camps of people that think about anthuriums. You're either in this camp where you're like, oh, anthuriums, widely distributed, kind of boring, but very easy to care for, great gift. Or you're like, oh, anthuriums, hard to care for, hard to find, super, you know, super rare collector's items. It's interesting that in one genus, there are so many different species and opportunities for every plant parent to have a win. So I wanted to dedicate an entire video to anthuriums in partnership with Proven Winners Leaf Joy. All of these gorgeous plants are Proven Winners Leaf Joy. They make high quality house plants and they grow high quality plants for everyone, whether you are in low maintenance plant parent or a curious collector. Before we dive in, I wanted to do a little bit of a anatomy lesson on anthurium because I think it's very interesting and we have a lot of things at play. First off, anthurium commonly get mislabeled, I guess, as alocasia. We have an alocasia over here on set. You can see they have these beautiful heart-shaped leaves. In my book, Growing Joy, I have a whole practice on having plants with heart-shaped leaves and using them as a gratitude practice. But alocasia and anthurium can, can have similar anatomy and also syngonium, but they're this classic long skinny stem with a beautifully heart-shaped leaf. Usually on anthurium, the lobes, the like top of the heart are separate. This is also called the sinus where the lobes kind of meet. You have the midrim, the long stem that gives this classical like jungle vibe. To me, anthuriums really do look prehistoric with the veining that they have. I love this clarinervium, the dark green leaf with the white veining, this long midrib, all of the side veins. It's just so freaking beautiful. I can't even stand it. And an interesting thing about anthuriums is that they are in cultivation for as much for their flowers are th as they are for foliage. So you will likely see a lot of these anthurium flowers in arrangements, right? These anthurium flowers are super popular in the floral industry because they have a really long vase life. They also last forever on houseplants. I've got to say the anthurium adrianum, otherwise known as the flamingo plant, that's this type of anthurium that you find in every single garden center. The blooms come in white, pink, orange, red, it's kind of an underrated plant because it is so widely available, but these blooms last forever, longer than any other blooming houseplant that I have. So if you are someone who wants to have a houseplant that blooms more easily, you don't need to like blast it with light in order to get a bloom. Anthuriums are a great option. They also will stay on the plant for months. I have one anthurium in my house that I give like moderate light that is in bloom probably 10 out of the 12 months a year and the blooms last forever. It's so nice. So the actual flower of the anthurium is this. The inflorescence is a cluster of tiny flowers. This is called the spathe. It's almost like a leaf that covers the flower. And this is the spadix. So all together, we've got the inflorescence flower. This is the spathe. This is the inflorescence spadix. It's so tropical. It's why you tend to see it in a lot of like tropical wedding bouquets. Another cool thing about the anthurium genus that I love is the leaves put off like a color changing magic show for you. So the tender leaves tend to come in and be almost purple and red. And as the plant establishes, it turns darker and darker green. So it's really fun watching the leaf have its entire kind of life cycle as it pops out as this very tender kind of purple and then establishes in the deep green. It's like, um, it's like those mood changing rings almost, right? Like depending on what state it's in, it just keeps developing colors. I kind of love it. So let's go into a little bit of care. Anthuriums, I'm going to show you one of my anthuriums, which is pretty tragic. They do not like to dry out. Let me show you why. So this is a very sweet listener who's a very dear friend of mine sent me this sweet little clarinervium. It was a cutting. It had two leaves a couple of years ago. It established great. It took to, you know, it took to the soil but I had some sort of travel where I let the plant dry out. I let the pot dry out and the leaves completely shriveled up and died back. 
Now, the interesting thing about anthurium is that they're actually pretty hardy. So what happened was the leaves died off. I trimmed them off. So basically this was a naked pot. But when I took this plant out of its pot, it had a really robust, healthy root system. So I watered the soil. I kept watering the roots. I put a glass orb on top of it to up the humidity. And this leaf has popped out. And it is going through the dark, you know, it looks kind of dark red right now. It's slowly turning into dark green. As I water it, this will keep putting off new growth and it will continue to establish. This plant as a tender little cutting with only two leaves, it's not going to be as hardy as a plant that you buy with a robust root system with a bunch of leaves. If one or two die off, you can clip it and still have some leaves to photosynthesize. So with the anthurium genus in general, I am going to recommend you buy established plants. I'm not a fan of the cuttings, even though if you want to gift me a cutting of a clarinervium, I will happily accept it from you. But I have found personally, it's been much easier for me to care for fully established plants than this cutting, but also one or two leaves versus like a bunch of leaves. I don't know. It's a different vibe. So with that in mind, with my sad little anthurium crystallinum cutting in mind, don't let your plants dry out, okay? They want evenly moist soil. They don't want wet feet. They don't want to be sitting, you know, in sopping wet soil, but they want evenly moist soil. You can maybe let the top inch of the soil dry out, but do not let that full pot dry out or the leaves are really going to struggle. This plant you can put pretty much in any condition and it's going to be fine. I've had this plant in very low light conditions and it's been totally fine. The leaves do not get crispy. It's a very hardy plant. You can even feel the leaves of the flamingo plant, the Adrianum, are much thicker and waxier than the leaves of the more tender Crystallinum and Clarinerviums. These are going to be fine. Once you get into the more rare, more collector's item plants, usually also you can feel it if their leaves are fuzzy or if their leaves are thinner. This is where humans humidity is going to be an issue. So if you have some of the more expensive anthuriums, if you want perfect leaves that have no brown crispy edging, you're going to want humidity. If you see that your leaves start to get uniformly brown on the outside, that's probably going to be a humidity issue. In terms of light, anthurium live like at the bottom of the jungle or the bottom of the trees. They don't want bright direct light. They do not want direct sun shining on these leaves. They like a moderate amount of like medium light, you know, a foot from a window. You can do under a gentle grow light. They are kind of an easier, I wouldn't put them in low light, but bright indirect light, it's great. And I feel like you need these hardy, bright indirect plants so that you have your highlight plants like the ficus that we've talked about, succulents, cacti in the front of your windowsills. And then these are great for like a tabletop, right? Like I have a lot of these on my living room table that's about two feet from my window. So they like a nice, bright indirect light. If you do have them in a lot of light, just be mindful, look for scorching. But if you want your anthuriums to get big, huge leaves like this, right? Like the big, gorgeous leaves that we all see on Instagram, the gorgeous big hearts, you do need to tinker with the light because you got to find how much light can you give them without burning them. And that is going to help the plant photosynthesize, make more food, grow bigger and stronger. Let's talk about a few troubleshooting things. A lot of the issues with anthurium is going to be humidity. So if you need to amend the humidity, you can use a humidifier in your room. You can put them behind a lot of people do the Ikea glass cabinet. They put their um, anthuriums, you know, in some sort of glass cabinet under glass. You know, your grandma's watering orbs, they have these in either terracotta spikes or these watering orbs. You fill them with water and then you stick them in the soil. I've been having great success with these with my alocasia and my other moisture loving plants and my calathea. So if you struggle with, you know, if you travel or, you know, if you struggle with keeping a plant's soil evenly moist, you can try a watering orb. So I have so many anthuriums I want to show you. Let's do a little bit of a show and tell. Let's go over some different species. So I have a couple of different bird's nest anthuriums. I guess that's where we can start. So this is the hookerai. Nice, large, waxy green leaves. The hookeri has a little bit of variegation. I love the color of the lime green midrib with the dark green leaf. So beautiful. Also, look at how gorgeous this tender green is on the new leaves. So beautiful. I love it. Here's another um, bird's nest anthurium. We can compare and contrast. This is called the plaumonii. Man, this plant is sturdy. I mean, the stems on this plant, like I shake this plant, these leaves aren't going anywhere, which is so different if I shake one of these, right? The edges of the leaves are wavy. The the veins, the midrib and the veins are raised a little bit more obviously than on the hookeri. So we can do like a comparison of the plaumonii and the hookeri. 
But both of these are the bird's nest style. So as you see, they grow in a rosette form and the leaves will continue to get bigger and bigger and bigger. So this plant is going to take up a lot of space. Now, let's go through the claret, um, the crystallinums that we have on the table. Sometimes I get the question, how do you tell a clarinervium and a clarini, a claret, oh my God. Sometimes I get the question, how do you tell clarinervium apart from crystallinum? These plants look pretty similar, right? A few ways to tell the difference between a clarinervium and a crystallinum. The clarinerviums tend to have darker green leaves and a little bit of a thicker and sturdier leaf. The crystallinum leaves are a little bit more narrow and they're thinner, so they're more delicate. These are very similar looking plants. So if you can't tell the difference, I'm not gonna judge you. So this is the Clarinervium that I have. It's so beautiful. I love, for me, it's the contrast of the dark green and the white veins. I just think this plant is so stunning. I also love the blooms coming in in lime green with the lime green space. I just think it's beautiful. I love that this plant has a lot of little baby leaves. You can see the little tender leaves. This is actually kind of a good example. You can see that the outside of this baby leaf has some purple and um, kind of maroon edging. And as this leaf grows into itself, it will look dark green. A cool thing about Proven Winners Leaf Joy is they have a lot of different cultivars and species of so many of these really popular plants. So all of these are crystallinum varieties. This one is the crystallinum heart's desire. Oh, can you even? It's like chubby almost. Can I say that the leaves are chubby because they're so wide and heart shaped? It's called Heart's Desire, obviously, because of its heart-shaped leaves, but it has the veining is white and silvery. It's iridescent, and it's quite magical. It's quite beautiful. To me, this is going to be the most delicate of the three because there's more silver, and the leaves are pretty thin, so I'm definitely going to be mindful of the humidity with this one and making sure that it doesn't dry out. This is the Anthurium alexandrite is right. This is an interesting one. It's named after Alexandrite a gemstone because of the iridescence in the veining. It's kind of like an Alexandrite. And Alexandrite is a gemstone that, depending on the lighting and how you look at it, it looks either purple or green or blue. And they say that this resembles that Alexandrite iridescence and kind of color changing in the sun. And then this to me feels like if this one and this one had a baby, it's called Anthurium Dorayaki Silver. Look how wide and beautifully heart-shaped these leaves are. It's a little bit darker, but it has more significant silver veining. All of the undersides of the leaves are green as compared to the undersides of a lot of alocasia which are purple. That's another way to tell anthurium and alocasia apart if you struggle with that. And last but not least, I've saved the best for last. This is my new favorite plant in my entire collection. When it arrived, I audibly gasped. Check out this plant. Check out this plant. Is this not the coolest plant you've ever seen in your whole dang life? Is that not the coolest leaf you've ever seen? Does this not give you the immediate indoor jungle vibes that everybody wants so much? I love how big it is. It's in bloom. The bloom, look at that inflorescence. It's so huge. This plant to me is gonna be like, the prize of my collection now. It's definitely going to be on display somewhere in my house and not in my little closet that I have most of my plant collection in. These leaves are so huge. And if I give this plant enough light, they're going to get bigger and bigger. My goal is for this plant to like take over one of the corners of my house. I love the lobes. I love the unique shape. It's almost like it has antlers, plant friends. I mean, can we even... And how hardy and robust, to me, this is not going to be a hard anthurium to take care of. It's got really juicy, glossy, thick leaves, <laughs> as I just kind of ripped the leaf a little bit. It's got waxy, thick, succulent leaves that are very upright and sturdy. If you shake it, you're not like scared that it's going to fall over, where sometimes when I shake these more delicate plants, I get a little worried about their leaves. It's so big, and I just think it's an amazing statement plant. To recap, anthurium, never let the soil dry out medium light, air on the bright side, not on the dark side. Some need a little bit more humidity than others, but there really is a species within this genus for everyone, whether you're looking for a low maintenance plant, a high maintenance plant, or a stunner statement plant. Thank you so much to Proven Winners Leaf Joy for partnering with me on this video. All of the anthurium that I just showed you are by Proven Winners Leaf Joy. They are cultivating top quality house plants. Look for the Proven Winners Leaf Joy tag at your local garden center. Ask for Leaf Joy. And let me know in the comments, what's your favorite anthurium? Did I miss any care tips that you want to share with our community? Let me know if I should keep my eye out for any anthurium that you think are really amazing collector's pieces. And I hope this episode helps you continue to keep growing joy.